Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asian Newsline and here the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday the 24th of October. Thousands evacuated as India's eastern coast braces for cyclone Dana. Dozens of US lawmakers call for release of Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan. And Israel issues travel warning to parts of Sri Lanka over terrorism threat. details. Heavy rainfall large parts of Indian states of West Bengal and Odisha on Thursday as these states brace for the landfall of Cyclone Dana later in the night. The storm that is currently over East Central Bay of Bengal is likely to intensify into a severe cyclonic storm and make landfall between Bhitar Kanika National Park and Dharma Port. Odisha has already evacuated over a million people from areas that will be hit by Cyclone Dana. Over 300 trains have been cancelled and flight operations at Kolkata airport have also been suspended. Both the states have closed schools in the areas that are expected to bear the brunt of the storm and have asked fishermen not to venture out to sea. Severe storms lash coastal cities in India and neighbouring Bangladesh during the cyclone season from April to December each year, causing extensive damage. Odisha's worst cyclone in recent years was in 1999, which ragged for 30 hours and killed 10,000 people. It is likely to move northwestward and cross North Odisha and West Bengal coast between Puri and Sagar Island, close to Bitterkanika and Dhamra during, uh, during midnight of 24th, means today to early morning of. Uh, to the morning of 25th of October as a severe cyclonic storm while crossing wind speed will be around 100 to 110 km per hour gusting to 120 km per hour uh, the very difficult is raining from the road the road is raining the road is raining the road is raining the road is the road is raining the road is raining India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar in his address at the BRICS outreach session in Russia on Thursday called for a more equitable global order as he highlighted the need for reforms in international institutions. He outlined some key steps to create a more balanced world order including democratizing the global economy and sharing innovative initiatives such as India's digital public infrastructure and the International Solar Alliance. The, the minister reiterated India's commitment to dialogue and diplomacy, stating that this is not an era of war. He also expressed concern over the ongoing Middle East conflict, advocating for a fair and durable solution, including the two-states resolution. Russia's President Vladimir Putin, who proceeded over the closing session, hailed the role for the BRICS bloc as a counterbalance to the West. strengthening and expanding platforms of an independent nature. This economic, political, and cultural rebalancing has now reached a point where we can contemplate real multipolarity. The BRICS itself is a statement of how profoundly the old order is changing. Disputes and differences must be settled by dialogue and diplomacy. Agreements once reached must be scrupulously respected. International law should be adhered to without exception and there should be zero tolerance for terrorism. Over 60 Democratic lawmakers from the US House of Representatives wrote to President Joe Biden on Wednesday urging him to use Washington's leverage with Pakistan to secure the release of Pakistan's jail former Prime Minister Imran Khan. Khan has been in jail since August 2023 and has faced dozens of cases since he was ousted as Prime Minister in 2022, after which he launched a protest movement against a coalition of his rivals led by current Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif. Khan says cases against him which disqualified him from contesting the February elections are politically motivated. The Democratic lawmakers also raised concerns about reported irregularities in Pakistan's election. The Pakistan government denies being unfair in Khan's treatment and its election commission denies rigging. There was no immediate reaction to the letter from the White House, nor have Pakistani officials commented on it. 
moving on. Ad hoc employees in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir have been living in a state of uncertainty for decades as the government continues to ignore their pleas for regularization. A report. Disgruntled ad hoc employees in Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir have accused the government of failing to address their long standing demand for regularization while their counterparts elsewhere in Pakistan have been granted regular status the employees in POJK continue to work without job security or benefits kisi ki 23 saal sarvasa kisi ki 31 saal hai kisi ki 16 saal hai kisi ki 8 saal hum to ye kehte hain jiski ek din bhi hai usko bhi kare us waqt ke jo process ke tahat guzar ke aaye unko unhi mein se baazon ko unhone mustaqil kiya jahan pe inke azizo karam the unme kanuni sukum jitne bhi the unhone dur kiye और उनको मुस्तकिल कर दिया और जो लावारस थे रियासत के अंदर वो बेचारे इस तरह आज तक उनके ऊपर तलवार लटक रही है कि वो हटा गए और कितने ही लोग फोत भी हो गए इस मुस्तकिली में दे हैव बीन सेवरल प्रोटेस्ट इन द पास्ट वन ईयर बाय एड हॉक एम्प्लॉइज अंडरस्कोरिंग द गवर्नमेंट्स फेलियर टू प्रोवाइड एडिक्वेट एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड सिक्योरिटी टू इट्स सिटीजंस इन पीओजेके Iranian President Masood Pazeskian during a meeting with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi at the BRICS summit emphasized the need for regional engagement on Afghanistan. Pazeskian underscored the importance of addressing challenges and fostering peace and stability in the war-torn country. In their discussions, Pazeskian reaffirmed Iran's support for any initiatives that promote peace in Afghanistan. A statement called for cooperation with Afghanistan emphasizing Iran's commitment to helping the Afghan people achieve peace, prosperity and stability. Reacting to the development, Taliban spokesperson Zabihullah Mujahid expressed the interim Afghan government's desire for good relations with Iran and India. He added that Afghanistan has strengthened economic ties with multiple countries and seeks to improve diplomatic relations as well. Bangladesh interim government has officially banned the Bangladesh Chhatra League the student wing of ousted prime minister Sheikh Hasina's Awami League party declaring it as a terrorist organization in a gazar notification issued late on Wednesday Bangladesh interior ministry cited the BCL's history of serious misconduct over the past 15 years including violence harassment and exploitation of public resources and said the ban under the anti terrorism act will take effect immediately founded in 1948 the bcl has historically been a significant faction within the awami league however it has been accused by the interim government of attacking protesters during the student movement which led to hasina's ouster the move comes in response to escalating demands from the anti discrimination student movement which outlined five key demands including the abolishment of the current constitution the removal of president mohammad shahabuddin and the dissolution of the bcl Meanwhile the Human Rights Watch on Wednesday called for amendment in the International Crimes Tribunal Act to ensure an impartial judicial process in a letter to the law ministry the rights body said ensuring fair trials will only strengthen the accountability process and is the only way to deliver genuine justice to victims and their families The group also raised concern on reports of banning Hasina's Awami League and said any such provision will be at risk of political misuse in the future. We are concerned that a broad ban on entire political party undermines other human rights obligations including the right to free association it said. Israel's National Security Council called on Israelis on Wednesday to immediately leave some tourist areas in southern Sri Lanka over the threat of a possible terrorist attack. In a statement, the agency said the warning pertained to the area of Arugam Bay and beaches in the south and west of Sri Lanka and stemmed from current information about a terrorist threat focused on tourist areas and beaches. While the Security Council did not specify the exact nature of the threat, it said they are in close contact with the security authorities in Sri Lanka and following the developments. Similar security warnings were issued by the US Embassy in Sri Lanka followed by diplomatic missions of Australia, New Zealand and the UK citing indication of possible attacks on tourist destinations. A police spokesperson said security has been beefed up in the area and officials are on high alert. 
Sri Lanka, famed for its pristine beaches, tea plantations and historic temples, is seeing a resurgence in tourists as the island nation recovers from a severe financial crisis. In the first eight months of this year, 1.5 million tourists arrived in Sri Lanka, including a total of 20,515 from Israel, government data showed. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.